In Britain, the media, the judiciary and parliament are locked in a battle over how much private information should be available for public consumption. For years, tabloids have hacked into people's voicemail messages in search of the ultimate scoop. Now celebrities are fighting back, taking out what's known as super injunctions to stop their sex lives being paraded in the press. But it seems they don't always work. New technologies like Twitter are one step ahead of the law and the British Prime Minister says that something needs to change. Europe correspondent Emma Alborici reports. The British press have a long and proud tradition of revealing secrets about the private lives of public figures. But in a market now dominated by 24-hour TV news and the internet, newspapers are becoming increasingly desperate to compete. They're going to great lengths to bring their readers stories they can't see anywhere else. I think a healthy democracy should have a, a healthy media. And that does mean an aggressive, investigative, sceptical media. But it doesn't mean a media that's effectively deciding that whilst in theory supporting the rule of law, it should be allowed to break the law. And two fake messages. Evidence of widespread phone hacking at Rupert Murdoch's News of the World has already seen two people jailed and three others arrested. The newspapers have been involved in another form of criminal activity. They've breached injunctions. But so far, no one has been prosecuted. BBC presenter Andrew Ma is one of the many who've been granted super injunctions. He wanted to suppress reports of an affair with a fellow journalist. The man who became known as Fred the Shred, the former chief executive of the Royal Bank of Scotland, also took out a court order to have his affair with a colleague kept secret. But the most famous and now infamous of the celebrity super injunctions was obtained by footballer Ryan Giggs. Well, human beings are quite interested in sex and sex st sells, but that at the same time doesn't mean that it's necessarily that much of an issue. These stories actually only tend to be important to those people relatively close to them and they're today's newspaper, tomorrow's chip paper. But, but they have got a bit of a point, haven't they, some of these celebrities, that it's really no one's business what they're doing. Yeah, nobody has a right to know, but people do have a right to tell the truth. And, you know, human beings gossip about each other. The judges in England have recently said that you should go to jail for jo gossiping. I don't think that's true. There is no specific privacy law here in the UK. So instead, people have resorted to asking the courts for injunctions to stop their private or confidential information making it into the media. A super injunction prevents people not only from reporting the story, but it gags them from reporting the fact that the injunction itself even exists. It's good to see Ryan Giggs here. Manchester United star player Ryan Giggs wanted details of his affair with Big Brother star Imogen Thomas kept private. He argued in court that she'd been blackmailing him. But no sooner did Ryan Giggs get his gagging order than Twitter users told the world how he'd cheated on his wife. Ryan Giggs is suing Twitter, said one, I can't Imogen why. I think there's a question of reality, isn't there? I mean, I think it's improbable that uh, the English High Courts can stop the World Wide Web or other legal jurisdictions. I, I think people sometimes have to, to bow to practicality. Ryan Giggs' super injunction applied only in England, which didn't stop the Scottish Herald plastering his picture all over the front page. By the time the gig scandal was published in Scotland, an estimated 75,000 people had already read about it on Twitter. Mr Speaker, um, with about 75,000 people having named Ryan Giggs on Twitter, it's obviously impracticable to imprison them all. John and Hemming is a Liberal Democrat member of the British Parliament. He upset the judiciary when he used parliamentary privilege to reveal the name of the man whose privacy was supposed to be protected by a super injunction. When I referred to this issue in Parliament, naming Ryan Giggs, at that time there are reasonable estimates that 20, 000, 20 million people in this country already knew his name. Now, the law on this is the law of confidentiality. So, in other words, if it's confidential, you're not supposed to mention it outside Parliament. Well, it wasn't confidential. 
Even the Prime Minister has now conceded that in the words of another MP, digital media has made an ass of the law. The law and the practice has got to catch up with how people consume media today. I don't think there's an easy answer to this. I mean, perhaps the way through is to look again at the Press Complaints Commission, the work it does. If people can have more confidence in that, then we could have less of this uh, current approach. And the Press Complaints Commission, its great weakness is the fact that it's a body effectively of the press, by the press, for the press. I mean, you know, Paul Dacre, editor of the Daily Mail, which is one of the most evil newspapers on the planet, and he's the for years has been chair of the, 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 the code committee that sort of decides what, the, what they should and shouldn't be able to get up to. So it's a joke. The organisation is a joke. For years, Alistair Campbell worked for Tony Blair in charge of media management at Downing Street. In his view, the biggest scandal surrounding the UK media is the fact that they've devoted countless front pages to stories about Ryan Giggs' sex life while virtually ignoring a much more important issue, how Rupert Murdoch's News of the World hacked into the private phone calls of thousands of people. Frankly, if you're talking about the public interest as opposed to what the public might be interested in, I think you'd have to acknowledge that the idea of systematic criminal activity by newspapers in the pursuit of stories is probably more in the public interest uh, reporting on that than yet another kiss-and-tell story involving a Premier League footballer. But there's another in, in, argument entirely about whether that particular, you know, those sorts of stories serve another role in terms of, of uh, I guess, exposing a lie. Some yeah, in, that's, the, in that's... the media would say, you know, that these these footballers and, and other celebrities put it out there that they're the great family men. Well, they do, they don't. I'm not defending what they get up to in their private lives. I'm simply saying, let's stop pretending that this role model argument is anything other than an excuse for the media to run the stories and have some spurious public interest defence. In Thailand, you have Lay's Majesty, where, you know, if you make jokes about the king, you can go to jail. In England, it's footballers. If you can make jokes about footballers on Twitter, you can go to jail. I think that's wrong. The right to privacy is now under review by a joint committee of both houses of the British Parliament. The race is on for those within Westminster to find a way to change the law, to stop MPs and others from openly flouting it. The High Court is preparing to hear five test cases of phone hacking, including that of actor Jude Law, whose proceedings lawyers say will implicate a very senior executive at News International. That report from Europe correspondent Emma Alborici. Last night we brought you a story about new evidence of atrocities committed during the final days of the civil war in Sri Lanka. Today a spokesman for the foreign minister said that the images obtained by 730 were horrific and that Australia urges the Sri Lankan government to respond to the allegations and to move actively towards reconciliation and dialogue. That's the program for tonight. I'm off to the Parliamentary Press Gallery's midwinter ball but I promise we'll be back at the same time tomorrow. For now, good night.